Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny wimey stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Oh, wow, that was a tad loud. Sorry for that. Hello and welcome to Safe Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me tonight, we have Scarecrow. Good evening. We have Amy. Heyo. We have Stuart. Heyo. And we have EJ. Did how's it going, man? Welcome, everybody. <laughs> and de- didn't deafen Sky at all. Whoops. And... Do you want to uh, do you want to intro my ringer as well? Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Calm down. Hey, be that way. I was just gonna say tonight on the podcast we have, uh, wow, we have Dragon Ball Super. We have other topics which I am currently looking for. There they are. Five <laughs> ways that <laughs> shut up. Five ways this um, that Star Trek and Star Wars are better than each other. And did Star Trek? And Stargate and other multi-universe series set the foundation for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and f- starting it off, we're going to start with Dragon Ball Super. The new Dragon Ball Z series, which has just started coming out. It is set after the end of the Boo Saga. And I've watched the first few episodes of it. And EJ has brought himself a ringer because he doesn't Dragon Ball anymore so ej feel free to introduce your ring up well my ringer is my brother here z nobody uh who is an excellent uh, uh musician and artist who um actually has uh, been performing a lot uh, around the california area including the famous whiskey a go-go and uh if you guys want to check out his music you can probably check it out at znobody.com uh, and if you ask him really nicely, he might give you a taste. But he's also, like, the biggest DBZ fan I have ever met. Um, uh, and so I decided, uh, you know, with your guys' permission, I'll go ahead and bring him on board because I know a total of jack shit about DBZ. Uh, the only thing I know is that no matter what, Captain Kirk would beat Goko's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Superman beats Goko, we know that, but... Captain Kirk. No, but Captain Kirk beats both of them. No, no. See, Captain Kirk wouldn't beat them. Captain Kirk would have them in his bed next to them for no apparent reason. <laughs> it would just, it's, 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 just, it's a Kirk thing. It just happens. He can't help it. I think you created a whole new genre of slash fiction. <laughs> you forgot rule number one. As soon as Kirk's shirt gets torn, he becomes a god. <laughs> so what? When his shirt gets torn, he comes Thor. <laughs> no, he, <doesn't. laughs> he makes Thor too? like a pansy. <sighs> Rip shirt Kirk. His he, that name exists for a reason. Yeah. There's Rip shirt Kirk. <laughs> there's Chuck Norris, and there's the Sega guy whose name I can't think of. Sonic? No, no, no. The, the Death Battle did a um, Death Battle did this versus between Chuck Norris and this other guy whose name I can't think of, but it's like the Japanese equivalent of Chuck Norris. And them fighting literally entered the universe. So, that happened. I love Death Battle. Oh, Z wants to say hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the podcast, sir. So, let's kick it off. Let's, Let's jump straight into Dragon Ball Super. I've seen it. I know Z has probably seen it. Of course. Yeah. Who else has seen I've it? Seen, I've seen a couple apps. Yeah, I've seen the apps that have been out. Sweet. So we're all up to episode three, I'm assuming. Except me. Uh, no, I've only seen up to I've only seen up two. Okay. Um, so so far, for those who haven't seen it, it c- continues on after the Boo Saga, and sort of at the moment, it's setting the foundation for Battle of Gods. Uh, Battle of Gods. So Gohan's still a pansy. Um, yeah, yeah, the, Gohan the, is so completely, totally whipped by Videl that it is not funny. Oh, it's but, hilarious. What, being whipped by Videl and his mother. 
It's like, oh my god, you bought me a book! Oh, you're the greatest! <laughs> it's like, what I the, hate the fact, hell? <laughs> I hate the fact that they've made Gohan so weak and he, when he works so hard to get to that stage. Yeah. Yeah. He it just doesn't... went from being badass to being meh. Yeah, but see, the problem was when Gohan took the took over from Goku as the lead in Dragon Ball Z, um, the lead badass, there was a massive, massive we call BS from the fans, which effectively brought around Super Saiyan 3. So, that happened. Well, Super well, Saiyan 3 was already coming, but... Yeah. If we all remember, like in the in the very beginning of the of Dragon Ball Z, uh, when you know the famous lines that were uttered, the power level is over nine thousand. You know, Gohan was was pretty powerful as yeah. a child. As so, a four year old, uh, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it didn't surprise me. At some point, he surpasses his father. Yeah, well, it was meant to be. Dragon Ball was the story of Gro Goku growing up, and Dragon Ball Z was meant to be more of Gohan's story of him going through the same sort of issues. But, yeah, it didn't work that way. Yeah, it really didn't. Yeah. Everyone wanted Goku, Goku, Goku. Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, anyway, Pretty it's much. so far what we've seen is Goku plowing a field. No <laughs> weird creepiness intended. Um, <laughs> on a tractor. Because flying around dragging the plow behind you as a Super Saiyan isn't good enough. He has to do it on a tractor. Yeah. Which was really weird. And then go. <laughs> What was it Gotan and Trunks flew around for a bit looking for some stuff to give to Videl for the wedding present, and yep. they found a random lake with water and fought a random giant snake. Then what else is new with them? Yeah, then they gave it to Videl, and Videl's like, "Oh, it's like, oh, they gave me a cosmetic. Oh, this is awesome!" And then tried it on, and she went, "Oh, it's just water, whatever." <laughs> um, <laughs> and I thought Gurenlagen was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next episode was actually pretty funny it i was... actually really love the second episode vegeta oh, oh. poor yeah, vegeta. vegeta just standing there on top of the capsule thing going this is nothing <laughs> just plowing that through everything hilarious <laughs> and then, and then oh. vegeta does to... get some good stuff <laughs> and then so. and then that bomb is just trying to flip him off by doing tricks in the air <laughs> She 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 does tricks in the air, goes underwater, and then plows through trees. If any flying aircraft that we had today could do half of that, would be spectacular. It would be. But yeah, so and Virginia just sort of stands there, and just tanks it all. It's just like, yep, yeah. this is nothing. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he lasted as long as he did. Yeah, they, they, they what they did was trunks. Um, Bulma and Vegeta went on a day off to like a theme parky type island and was sort of relaxing and Trunks and Bulma were having a blast and Vegeta was just sulking the whole time. What else is um, new? Until the buffet was brought out and he realised there was a <laughs> bottomless pit of food in front of him and then he was happy. Hello, uh, Saiyan here. Yeah. Yep. And it, him and Trunks sort of had this contest to see who could nom into the most food <laughs> resulting in one of the supposedly dead giant squids covering Vegeta in ink. You can sort of imagine how well that went. <laughs> but actually, not happy. Actually, for Vegeta, that was pretty. Oh yeah, he was he, he was calm he... and controlled, all things considered. He only he only managed to crack a few plates. Well. He only he took a few that plates really well. So when a Saiyan like lights himself on fire, can he like cook? food off of that like yeah you know, is that yes. how they cook the food from this feast <laughs> yes it's kept it kept vegeta alive under the freezer years it um is also how goku cooks his meat in the hyperbolic time chamber leading up to the oh, like the act cook yeah <laughs> just joking. holds a just holds a string of sausages flares his energy and extremely well cooked yeah so yeah and then... expect him to actually cook with implements and you've got another problem <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's Look, why he gets Goku? beaten up by a fry pan. Exactly. That's, that's why he's always scared of Chi-Chi, because she magics food out of nothing. But have mm -hmm. you seen how much food she makes? Can you imagine their grocery budget? It'd be like a thousand million <laughs> dollars a think... day. There was that grocery budget problem. That was the whole reason why he was working with the tractor. Exactly. Yep. You need to make some money. <laughs> Until Hercule and gave think... him ten million zenny. No, it was a hundred yeah. million, wasn't it? It was so re something ridiculous. <laughs> So yeah. Goku is no longer the pure and innocent one. He took a bribe from Hercule. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. 
And yeah. then, um, so anyway, the, the party continues and they end up out on the dance floor sort of area. Oh, this mosh that's pit. funny. This oh, guy's doing that. like fire twirling and stuff and Vegeta's like, where the hell the other two go? And they're like, they're looking for him and um, then people start nudging Vegeta around. Not a happy chappy. Go, gets a little bit aggro, launches a few people flying just with his energy and then pisses off into the distance. <laughs> and Bulba's like, eh, he tried. It's better than he he lost the dogs than I expected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, and this whole time it jumps away to Beerus and showing Beerus and Wiz doing different things on other planets. Wiz! Not Wiz, Wiz! Whatever, don't care. Um, doing different things you, on other the planets. Way you make it sound, you, the way you make his name sound is like he's taking a piss. Exactly. After all, he's the fastest flyer in the galaxy, in the universe. Seriously, I want to get a picture of. What's his face from the Ginyu Force? And, and just have him say, hey, that's my line. <laughs> Berta. Berta, that's it, Berta. Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and so it sort of shows them going around and trying to work out what Super Saiyan God is. And eventually, by the end of the third episode, they've worked it out. And they're going to North Kai's planet, which is where Goku is. Which makes me suspect that this series is effectively going to be the Beerus movie stretched out into a series. Yeah, that made me kind of excited. So, the, uh, yeah. Beerus, the Beerus movie did leave a lot to be desired, though. Well, yeah. remember, Beerus does show, uh, um, for what has been leaked and from trailers, we actually see Beerus in Resurrection of F. So Yeah, mm. Be Beerus does play a role in that, but a relatively little one. Well, um, he's not the bad guy this time. Yeah. He's just... Speaking of which, he's, he's an observer. Those of you who are in Australia, if you get this pod, if you listen to this podcast before the sixth of August, the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth of August, event cinemas are showing Resurrection F in select cinemas around Australia. Look it up on their webpage for details. And event cinemas, if you want to send a check, you know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You uh, you, you no, should have seen. Uh, do. He uh, has a cinema card. Like, got all excited. Like you said that he's like, oh, I want to go to Australia now. They're playing it here. They're playing oh, they it the are? fourth. Yeah. Oh. It starts yeah. the fourth. Nice. I was just about to say, if you're in other countries, check up your local cinemas. You never know what you'll find. So, so where is it playing around you guys over there? Uh, I know it's playing at a, a theater in uh, Anaheim Hills called Cinema City, and that's so far the only one that I know of for sure that is um, showing it. Uh, By the way, Anaheim Hills is like right next to, to Anaheim, which is where Disneyland is, for all those who want to know where exactly he's talking about. So, yeah. so get in your car and start driving now, because America is a big place, and just flood there so we know Z can't get a <laughs> ticket. America is huge. <laughs> That's assuming he hasn't already got his ticket. All five. He's is probably... he larger than Australia? What? I was just idly wondering if U.S. was larger than Australia. Uh, yes, I think. No, no. actually. No, no. The continent hey, you guys the got a whole of country. America is larger, but U.S. actual location is smaller than Australia. Yeah. The, the, the continental states is smaller than Australia, but if you add in Hawaii and the, the, the reject states, then, yeah, it, it does. <laughs> no, does it's bigger of... if you add in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Like I said, the reject states. <laughs> well, if you add in Alaska, Alaska's huge. It's just nobody lives up there because it's so damn cold. That said, isn't Canada the only country that has technically invaded the United States and won? Um. Well, I wouldn't say they won, but no. Um. Well, uh, technically, depending on like who you talk to, like which side <laughs> you talk to, um, Mexico invaded the U.S. and that's what set off the Mexican-American War, where we totally kicked their ass. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wrecked house. But that said, in all honesty, <laughs> would you seriously not consider giving them Texas back? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'd rather just like, want, like. I don't know. Donald Trump might have a problem with that. Like, like. like just bred to the point where there was like more Tejanos than white people. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, back on topic. Dragon Ball Super. So far from what I've seen, it looks like it's going to get really, really good. It's definitely building up. Um, hopefully the fight bet the fights will be more spread out and hopefully they won't be that weird CG sort of look. 
As uh, long as they don't take 10 episodes to throw a punch again. Oh, oh wait, that's Dragon Ball Z full stop. Yeah. Now, that was this actually is the essentially... Whole... This is essentially Honestly, the... that's why I haven't watched DBZ is because, like, I have a hard enough sitting through the, uh, the fights in uh, One Piece that take forever, and, like, DBZ is, like, 10 times as bad, so... It's not actually that bad. The longest fight is the fight against Freezer, which went for 20 episodes. Yeah, um, that's, that's brutal. Nah. Um, okay, if it takes longer than an episode to throw two punches, I'm sorry, I'm out. It wasn't two punches, man. Frieza had to, like, evolve himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. About three times. Oh, dead. Four. Quite, quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's a question, though. Just sort of, to... really sort of related to... It's sort of related to Dragon Ball Z. Who here has watched Dragon Ball Z Breached? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I... Too. I actually, um, the guys who do Dragon Ball um, Z Bridge actually have a YouTube gaming, gaming channel. It's actually really hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah team, sure. team, team Four Star is spectacular. Um, they've recut and re edited Dragon Ball Z from the very beginning right through. Right now, they're just up to the Cell Saga. Um, and it is great, especially Nappa. Nappa is hilarious. <laughs> Vegeta! Shut up! Vegeta! I'm haunting you. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually got to um play a game of um of Quiplash with Team Four Star once. So nice. It was really hilarious. Nice. <laughs> Are we there yet? No. No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? Yes. <laughs> I wonder what it was. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Hey, Vegeta. What? Can we go to the bug planet, Vegeta? Oh, Nappa, <laughs> it'll shut you up for five seconds. Yeah, no, the Team Four Star guys are absolutely hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So, so Vegeta would be so used to um, Trunks for the facts of uh, Nappa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, never, I, never, I never considered that. <laughs> I never considered that. Trunks is Nappa reincarnated. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> no, I, I think I think Trunks is actually more useful than Nappa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's probably more useful. The question is, if Nappa went Super Saiyan, would his be would his little <laughs> mo go <laughs> yellow? <laughs> All his hair stick up, sticks up okay. instead of facing down it. His mustache. No, no, down his, it, his, up. He, yeah, his mustache points up and covers half his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, that's when, that's when they go right. Super Saiyan, their hair turns blonde, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. So they except become American. The... Well, except the... except a... with what's coming Pretty much. Blood hair, blue eyes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they become... Uh, or, or European looking. They become know? they become Aryans. Let's get it yeah, correct. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There... yeah. And if you... <laughs> and... Does that mean Jap Japan's just, like, really racist against themselves or something? Well, the funny thing is, there's actually part of the Dragon Ball Z story is around the stronger they get, the longer their hair is, which is also another biblical reference. Just randomly throwing that out there. Solomon. Samson. Yeah. So Superman, they get correct. stronger and stronger depending on the length of their hair. Anyway, we've pretty much done that one to death. So, Dragon Ball Super, definitely worth watching. Um, if you need to watch it online, check out Crunchyroll, I think has it. Um, legit. Um, and we're not allowed to support the legitimate ways of watching them. <laughs> Dead fish! <coughs> Sorry, that might have sounded like words. <laughs> So, moving on. Airlock. Oh. <laughs> Luckily, I control the airlock, and I only get thrown out if I say the wrong name. <laughs> so, let's move on to five ways Star Trek and Star Wars are better than each other. Let's start Star with... Star Trek Worlds. That's all you need to know. Star Trek's better. Let's start with Star Trek. I think the, te the transporter technology... How many things in Star Wars would be fixed with a little bit of beam me up? <laughs> Pretty much everything. Yeah. But you could just beam Princess Leia off the off the Death Star. Yeah. For one. Well, the the only real sort of shields that could in Star Wars that could stop it was the shield around the second Death Star because it's the only shield that sort of demonstrated to be remotely close to solid. So. Right. So all you need to do is transport a photon torpedo in, uh, in a cru crucial spot. Of a Star Destroyer or the Death Star, and boom. Yeah, pretty much. Now that all the Star Wars fans have stopped listening, let's move <laughs> on to the, the transporting thing is pretty much what the transphasics are anyway. Yeah. 
So let's see. Um, real world concerns. Yeah, Star Trek deals with a lot of sort of real world concerns. With <laughs> sorry, there's a bug flying around my face randomly. Anyway, deal with it does d tend to deal with a lot of more real world type concerns, or definitely a lot more than what Star Wars does. Um, but that can also be down to it being a TV series compared to a movie. So there is well, no, because I mean, even even in in a lot of the movies, you're still dealing with real world issues. Like Star Trek Two, you're dealing with people getting old, like like Kirk was getting older and and dealing with all that. And then he had like you know um, uh, enemies from his past coming after him and things like that. Star yeah. Trek One, you were dealing with the concept of uh, of like just thinking beyond your normal thought process and growing in some way, yeah. which is really what Star Trek was all about. Um, and then you just, you don't really have a lot of that in Star Wars. Yeah. Um, and... Even though we know that Star Wars has like the whole underworld bounty hunter side of things as well. Yeah. And... I mean, Star Wars has one major weapon. <laughs> of course. We're getting to Star Wars, okay? We'll get to Star Wars in a second. Yeah, um, yeah, I've got to get my digs in. Sorry, sorry. Phaser on wide beam, bye bye lightsaber. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Phaser on wide beam set to disintegrate. Yeah. Um, uh, vaporize, vaporize, get your terms right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been a while. Star Trek also <laughs> dealt with a lot of environmentally sided things, like the whole um, whales. Whales! Whales. <laughs> the whales thing. Yeah, Star Trek 4 was pretty much save the whales! Woohoo! Pretty much, yeah. And one of the episodes <laughs> of Next Gen had a bit of an environmentalist undertone as well, when they reached that um, they reached a place where the warp fields were stretching and disintegrating subspace, true, and they true. had to slow down to sort of warp five from then on out, which never happened. They were always going a lot faster. Well, it, it was unless out. unless you were in an emergency, you you had to slow down to to like the standard. Uh, war the, the cap on warp speed was warp five, which they yeah. generally <clears throat> held to unless there was a, an emergency. Which, if there's any good show episode, there's going to be an emergency. So yeah. Yeah. So anyway, then we've got sex. The original <laughs> series, as we mentioned before, Kirk, take <laughs> Kirk takes his shirt off, and out of nowhere, all of the alien women are in his bed. It's never really explained how. It's just it's just a Kirk thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he yeah, was con back. pretty sure his contract with Starfleet read, must get laid on every planet at least twice. That's where he was all going. Please, please develop cures to all intergalactic STDs. For those who <laughs> don't, I'd hate for... I'd hate to think of how many kids he has out there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, like, I hate to be, I hate to be a doctor having to like, doing a medical checkup on Kirk. Yeah. That'd be terrifying. Have you seen the? There's, there's an episode of Robot Chicken where Kirk's using the urinal and it just sort of sprays rainbow-colored liquid in random directions. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the the doctor's there and he's just like, "What the hell is going on? <laughs> what am I looking at?" <laughs> So. But you know, if, if, while we're on the issue of sex, I mean, uh, uh, the, you know, the related topic of gender issues, uh, you don't really talk a lot, or people don't really talk a, a lot about it. But honestly, TNG <coughs> was very forward-looking, especially for the late '80s, early '90s, yeah. on gender issues. Exactly. Uh, in season one or two, you had uh, the planet where gender roles were reversed, and it was men who were smaller and 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 not as um, and muscular, submissive. yeah, and more submissive. That was and, actually you know they were the ones who doubled themselves up, and then the women uh, ruled. And then you had Riker, who was then trying to assimilate into that society uh, for the mission, and so he's running around in you know these really skimpy. Um, outfits and all that kind of stuff. Also, you had a lot of the extras in the first few seasons uh, in the background wearing dresses. The men wearing dresses. Yeah. And skirts. Yeah. You also had that in the, on the actual next-gen ship. And that was actually point number five. Multicultural diversity. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and gender equality. We're, we're getting there. Um, Fine, then. Fine. I'm dropping the gun again. Yeah, a little bit. You do that, but... You, uh, you don't have the show. That. You're doing. You're calling from a phone. You don't have show notes in front of you. We could forgive you. So, yeah, so okay. One, well, one, thank you. I... One one thing Star Trek did do, I think, spot on, even in the original series, as much as they could in the original series, anyway, um, 
was a lot more diversity, especially racial diversity and gender diversity. Like in the originals, in sorry, in Next Gen, there's actually quite a few scenes where crew members on the ship are wearing the opposite gender's clothes in the background. So you'll see male crew members wearing the female crew's gear in the background wandering around, which was almost unheard of in the 80s. <coughs> yeah. Let alone when they were doing it. It's just, yeah, it's, they did a really, really good job with it. Yeah. Um, they, well, and then also I think it was season four or five where um, Riker fell in love with a, um, a, a person from a genderless society where gender any sort of gender, male or female, was thought of as uh, perversion, just like homosexuality is, yeah. or uh, hopefully was seen uh, in the modern day. And um, and then, uh, yeah, and then he like fell in love with this one who who identified as female, and then she ended up getting brainwashed to think she was quote unquote normal. But yeah, 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 and. Like, Star Trek even went so far as putting a female in the lead Starship command role in Voyager. Now, we won't go into True. we won't go into the character that was represented, but they, <laughs> leaving Captain Janeway alone, moving right along, the point is that they did a really good job of doing that, such a large amount of diversity in, in, to, in the time frame that they were doing it. That's what I'm trying to get at. Just my words oh, are yeah, sort yeah. of working. For- First black captain, first interracial uh, kiss. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, the doctor in TNG was a female, which back then what was a bit against. Um, I don't yeah. think it was as like, controversial, but it just wasn't common. You always assumed the doctor was a male. Yeah. Know, back in the nineties. Exactly. So yeah. anyway, okay, okay, okay. That's all fine and dandy like Sarlacc candy. But what has Star Wars got? Nothing. Nothing. No. no yep. <laughs> That's it. Five things that that Star Wars does better than Star Trek. Nothing. Nothing. Nada. Zip and zilch. There you go. Done. Moving right along. <laughs> no, I will say. I will say <laughs> the battle scenes are quite epic. Yeah. The, so it, 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 and it goes back to playing on the different mediums. The the. Star Trek guys didn't have much of a budget, relatively speaking, for battles, so they couldn't really focus on that. But in Star Wars, they had movie budgets, so they had lightsabers. Seriously, lightsabers. Wow. Well, well, how awesome is that? Wow. I, I'm, I'm looking at my the three that I've got, the Luke Skywalker one, the Darth Vader one, and the Qui-Gon Jinn one. They're on my shelf. Well, and, like, if you, if you watch, like, like I, I specifically remember specific episodes... Uh, yes, nine. The Dominion War broke out, and it was literally their entire battle scene was them sitting at consoles calling out what was happening. Yeah, which that was their fight. Their battle. Scene. Yeah, it's like in the early seasons of Game of Thrones when a big battle happened. You saw like three or four people riding out to go to it, and then something cut away to something else, and it cuts back to these three guys coming back in, busted up and bruised. It's like, wow, that was an epic battle, and it's like. Just, oh. <laughs> yeah, but see, that was even more than it these certain episodes. It wasn't in the budget. Had. Yeah, exactly. And it was—it just comes down to budget, <laughs> budgety things. It's like another thing that Star Wars had that Star Trek could have done better is Darth Vader, because Star Trek didn't. I will say that 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 was probably one of the most interesting villains of all time. That and and there, I don't know. I mean, the closest thing you could really get to that maybe is Khan. Yeah. Uh, but even then, you know, you didn't have that backstory. You didn't have. I mean, maybe you could say you had it in uh, at Star Trek Twelve, the uh, the uh, newest J.J. Abrams film. But um, you really uh, just don't have a villain that has that same of complexity that you can really sympathize with, uh, yeah. and so on and so. forth. Yeah, and that's assuming we forget episode one, two, and three happen and just focus on the actual Star Wars movies. The prequels happened. happened. Yeah, I know. I just, I'll admit the way they did the transformation was horrendous. Yeah. 
So yeah, another thing. But, but also, you you give the you give the the prequels great what comes too. They had some all the, the fight scenes were amazing, and just pod racing is. Oh, I wish. Yeah. yeah. Um, moving on to but point. In attack clones with the with the battle of Coruscant, that was just epic. Yeah. Yeah, and it's another thing that Star Wars did better than Star Trek, <laughs> which is exactly what EJ pointed out at the very beginning. It's actually point number three. Space battles. Yes. Yeah, the space yeah, battles. Yeah, you do that sometimes. Yeah, we, we forgive you, because you're awesome. Um, <laughs> space battles. Star Wars did space battles better, simply because they had the budget to do them. Mm. So, if Star Trek <laughs> And everyone had... remembers Perkins. Yeah, the Porkins. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially yeah, it, it, the it, it, especially the Family Guy version where he is literally oh, the... an X Wing with this ball hanging on the front of it, just grinding yeah. along the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All I can say about Star Wars Space Battles is it's a trap. It's a trap. Can't, I can't wait to meet <laughs> on, on a Star Wars action uh... one, no, he, he will actually be coming in a couple of weeks. I do not want to know what time. I was. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, he, um, Admiral Ackbar himself, I've forgotten the actor's name, so just go with Admiral Tim Ackbar. Russ. Yeah, Tim Russ. Uh, He's going to be at Oz Comic Con, so. I uh, give up. Oh, nice. What's up, Scarecrow? I was just trying to vent a uh, pet peeve of mine about Star Wars space battles. Is this going to be a rant about... They is, it the, is, it, is, it, is it the sound? Is it the, the flying like they're in atmosphere? Is no. it any of that stuff? Nope. No, that's Can we honestly bummer. come up with something that does not involve just two fleets jumping in and pounding on each other until they take enough damage and jump away? That sort of you tactics went that... out the freaking Napoleonic Wars. Actually, no. It you, went, you it went out Cold during. War. It actually went out during World War Two, which is what a lot of the Star Wars battles are analogous to. Just saying. Yeah, but well, even I in mean, World War II, they Lucas actually used commentary on. thinking in with it. I mean, the straight. Let's just go in and slug on them until they until they die or we die. Kind of went out with Napole with the Napoleonic Napoleonic era, but they're still using it. And yes, it had its play in World War Two. I'll admit that, but even then, there was still uh, flanking maneuvers and stuff like that. There's none of that in Star Wars. It's just let's just jump into this one space and sit there and shoot at each other. But again, that boils down to the medium. In Star Trek, you could see a lot of their different strategies they were using because they had the screen time to explain it in star wars they don't really have that so it's it's, it's like not a even lot of... it's not even explained in the books they don't they just don't think what books disney got rid of the books how dare you mention before, the material before disney came along and fucked with the program <laughs> hey actually maybe we'll get some tactical thinking now because disney's got more money than freaking lucas ever had <laughs> Mm. You know, it really is really interesting to see that, like, Star Trek had, like, like it, it, at the end of DS9, they were getting maybe, you know, um, 20, 30 million, or 25, 30 million dollars an ep uh, uh, to do, like, 23 episodes. Yeah. Where, so they were doing, like, 1.2 million dollars an episode for an hour. So for two hours, you're talking about, like, 2.4 million. Whereas with the Star Wars films, especially the the uh, uh, episodes one through three, you're talking about like two hundred million plus per Thing. film, which which is so for, you know, so literally we're talking about one percent of the budget, yeah. Um, but like a lot more screen time. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 like with Stargate. A lot of the Stargate episodes came in at around a million dollars a piece. The later ones going closer to two. And it was the same thing. You could see it on the screen time. The more money they had, the more sort of spacey stuff they could show. But yeah, anyway, right. moving on to point number four. The Millennium Falcon. Shy of the original Enterprise herself, the um, US, the seven, original 1701 Kirk ship, yeah. there is very few sci-fi ships as dominant in current culture as the Falcon. Yeah, I mean, in Star I Trek, the closest thing you have is the Defiant, but it's not. It's a shitbox! <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's, it's very well known for what it is. And, yeah, it. It's is... a flying pile of junk! But, see? <laughs> well, well, nobility hasn't see, come I'm out gonna, yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we have our own little, I'm, I'm gonna, little ship like that, so. <laughs> I'm gonna kick my car salesman in for a little bit. 
It's not a flying pile of junk. It's got personality. <laughs> it's rust has rust. It's got more rust than the USS Rustolium. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's got personality. It is personality. Oh, you know works. what? You know what though? Serenity. The Serenity from Firefly. Oh yeah. That would probably be the closest thing to something that's as iconic yeah. uh, as a Millennium Falcon. Yeah. And but the Millennium Falcon is known by anyone that's heard of Star Wars. It's almost as iconic as our fifth point, the Force. Mm. Yeah, let's see who we can kill with it. Yes. G- have... Give me a good phaser over the Force any day. Yeah. Well, there's been a couple For of people in Star Trek that have had sort of Force equivalent abilities that have been undone by a phaser, so... <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's short of, like, the supernatural being, like, Q, the only one I can think of is... Um, is Kess and Voyager. The original series of Star Trek had some. Yeah, yeah well, a, yeah, a, but... And there was some in Next Gen as well. Yeah. Not many, but some. Yeah, they... they well, they... there was... I mean, there, there was... Uh, what's his face? Um, was... in, 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 the, in the second pilot, there was, uh, there was uh, the nurse and... Or the doctor and the... Uh, um, and Kirk's friend who, who got supernatural powers. Yeah. But... And you had a yeah, you had a couple other supernatural beings, but they didn't they weren't humans with a or, or human like species with a power like the force. They were themselves yeah. supernatural beings it, or godlike beings. It wasn't Very until like. Stargate came along that you saw beings with the telekinetic type abilities like the or the prize of the Ori and the those sort of beings that had those abilities. The more quote highly evolved um Sort of races. The ascended beings. Yeah, effectively. So, yeah. And Sky, I completely agree. Yeah. The Evan Hawk is better. <laughs> yep. Now, here's something they both do really well. Rule 63 cosplay. Uh, we went there. We went there. Uh... I had to go like, there. Rule 63? Are you talking about Order 66? Or? No, no. No, no, Rule 63. For every male cosplay, there is a sexy, slutty female cosplay. True. But why is that called Rule 63? I'm, I am I am, I'm desperately losing my nerd card right now. Rule 63 makes me want to apply a different rule to it. Rule 63 Double. is a rule on the internet that reads as follows. For any given male character, there is a female version of that character. That's pretty much it. Well, I, so, I still like, want to apply that's, that's Rule 37 to Rule 63. There is no such thing as overkill. There's only open fire and I'm reloading. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Well, wow, there's the, the whole wall of rules here. Choosing a rule at random. Rule this one. Rule 56. Oh, no. No proof or it didn't happen. Yeah. What's rule 69? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's Captain Kirk. <laughs> rule 69. When the number 69 comes up in a conversation and then this conversation inevitably changes course towards a more sexual topic. <laughs> That's a nice rule. There we go. Enough, that happens a lot. <laughs> Next. What? So yeah. <laughs> anyway. Did you just blame me for that one. <laughs> yup. Anyway. <laughs> I'm above approach, apparently. Let's <laughs> let's let's move on to the the, the, the final topic. Did multi universe? Uh, sorry, multi story single universe shows on TV set the groundwork? Will pave the way for the Marvel Cinematic Movies and their larger universe. Now, my question is, when did this start happening in the comics? When did they start going into multiverse theory with the comics? Oh, uh, 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 ages ago. Yeah, ages ago. Ages ago, but that's not the point. The, 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 the TOS or Doctor Who. Um, it, it might, but the issue is that most people weren't exposed to the comics. Most people are exposed through TV shows, and you've got to show, yeah. you've got to keep that in mind as well. Like the, so, but so what are we what are we debating here? Are we debating 
um, where the concept may have originated, or are we debating what what made it acceptable amongst the broader sci-fi audience? What made it? Ex- what sort of? How do we put it? It's it's really hard to sort of put into words. It's effectively what made the general population open to the concept of multiple different stories that are independent to each other but take place in the same universe if you know what i mean the same sort of fictional foundation like with with doctor who there was a there's a long history of doctor who and sideshows that take place yeah. torchwood but sarah jane chronicles even before that there's the canine adventures yeah Oh, canine. Yeah, we're just... oh, oh, we're talking about more spin-offs happening. So you're not talking about like, no, 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 like with not... Star Trek, how you have like the alternate universe and uh, that uh, no. JJ's alternate universe. Yeah. You're talking about m- multiple storylines within the same universe. Yes. So like, oh. like Stargate SG One and Stargate Atlantis and Stargate Universe all take place in the same functional universe. And sort of yeah, like Flash that, and Arrow yeah. and stuff at the, at the same time. Yeah. And you've and... got Next Generation share. Splitting off into Deep Space Nine and Nine. yeah, and you've got, and you've got characters coming from each backwards and forwards between the two. You've even got an episodes like in Doctor Who when all those different characters come together. In, and even, and even uh, when they do the um, even during the um, the early years when they did the, the like the multiple Doctor episodes. Yeah, where exactly. It was like two, three, in two, three, four, and five. Yeah, I think it was the three Doctors and then there's the five Doctors if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and then if you want to branch outside of sci-fi, you have things like Frasier was a spinoff of Cheers, for example. Yeah, and there's... Yeah. Exactly. And there's even probably... It goes back even further before sci-fi, all the way back to, believe it or not, the Beverly Hillbillies in 1962. Oh, it, my goodness. Had a, had a spin-off series called The Petticoat Junction and Green Acres, all of which had characters... Wait, Green in... Acres is this... Really? Yeah, they all. Yeah, Green Acres is the same thing. It's a spin-off of Beverly Hillbillies. Um, it's done by the same guys in the same functional shared universe, with characters crossing over backwards and forwards between all those series. I'm gonna have to go oh, watch them. Yeah, and they all started. There's one. You got that. They all ran from like the early 1960s. 62 for Beverly Hillbillies, 63 for Petticoats, and 65 for Green Acres, and they all finished in 70 for Petty. Um, Petticoat Junction and 71 for Hillbillies and Acres um, and they shared the same functional universe and they probably did that back before Doctor Who which was 63 and Star Trek which was 66 but I think the best there, example I... we had is definitely when Next Gen came along and the torch was handed from the original series to Next Gen and then True, and but that, did this happen with features at all? Oh. Um, did the hill, I can't think did the, the hillbillies ones? The Beverly no, no, but like, like, did you ever have like a feature that was really successful, and then that led to maybe a sequel or something, and then eventually a character from that franchise uh, or from that set of films was spun off into its own storyline? Um, feature, just with features. Not really. In that's not how it happened in Stargate. Um, in Stargate, it was meant to be the SG One was meant to finish after seven seasons, and Atlantis was meant to take the Stargate torch and continue the story from there. And in the end, they got picked up for an eighth season, so it's, Atlantis became its own thing at that point. Um, I don't know how the the next gen stuff is before my time, so, well, so to speak. Yeah, well, I mean, so. hell, I, I'm literally as old as TNG. I'm just uh, obsessed with Star Trek. Yeah. So, um, but, I mean, but even, like, before that, if you go back to, like, the 60s or something, was there ever a feature um, uh, or series of features that then uh, took one of those characters and gave it its own franchise? Um, to be honest, or not its own franchise, yeah. but the films. I'm not sure. I know that the Monsters, the Universal Monsters films tried it, and it didn't really work. Um... But that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. But you know what? It did lead to the monsters. A lot of them were sort of independent, sort of their own stories. Like the Batman stuff was always separate to the Superman stuff, which was always separate to the Wonder Woman stuff. They were never sort of played as the same thing. Um, True. It it wasn't until sort of the, the first big one that I can think of is Next Gen. Like you've got shows like Law and Order and CSI and stuff that do similar sort of stuff, but... 
the bit the first really big one was in the 80s and that was next gen and it had interesting the, it had the hand hand over the torch from the original series with the first couple of movies and generations and then it continued that torch through next gen and then it handed that torch on to deep space nine and voyager while continuing doing movies and stargate Sadly. was similar it started with a big budget movie well 10 million dollar movie if i remember correctly a decent that's budget. still low budget yeah low budget movie it's not micro budget, but it's still low budget by Hollywood standards, even back in the nineties. Yeah, it's. it's I'd, I'd class it as a decent budget, but that's only because I'm a poor bastard that sees three zeros at the end of a one and goes, "Oh my god, that's awesome!" Let alone seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, working in Hollywood, I can tell you, um, like uh, we went. Uh, I worked on uh, Jingle uh, Jingle All the Way when I was eight, turning nine. And what was the budget on that? Something like twenty, twenty-five million, something like that. Yeah. And then I went to a five million uh, budget, uh, dollar budget, uh, run Ronnie Run when I was thirteen in o, oh, two thousand in two thousand, and that was like that was like ridiculously low budget by comparison, yeah. and what they were able to do and afford and and just like the the situation on set and everything. Yeah. Um. And nowadays, like like. Um, the stuff I'm working on is like ridiculously low budget, but, um, you know, if someone says, you know, you got $10 million from my perspective, that'd be like, holy shit, awesome. I have $10 million to work with. But if you look at the studio projects, the big budget yeah. projects that are like, you know, it's like three, here, have 500, million $500 million and that will just be the visual effects budget. Here, have another hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, uh, I think that, that, well, that would probably be like uh avatar that literally cost a billion dollars yeah so, yeah but they had to or maybe it grossed half... a billion no no sorry yeah. it grossed a billion yeah it, it, it grossed a billion i'm sorry there's a big difference there sorry it, cro it cost a <laughs> crap ton because he had to develop 3d cameras to film it properly for the whole thing so yeah but and they had to practically i mean i think they used the lord of the rings vfx as a jumping off point yeah but still they had to completely like like redo visual effects as as they knew them oh yeah and we, we, or, we, or we will we will color, cover visual effects at some point because that's my my pet little thing that i like looking at um but yeah. oh good that's what we're working on right now nobility <laughs> nice nice i'll have to plot that down for a, a topic down the road um, yeah so, i'd be happy to be on that one yeah um I say, if you look at um what sh at, um shows today and what spin-offs we have, probably the most pr uh, prominent one is Walking Dead, and that, and how it's just about to get its own spin-off. No. Oh, yeah? no, 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 no. Why so, not? I'm, I, I have I'm, heard I'm, nothing I'm, about Walking Dead. I'm, I'm sorry, Stuart, there. but you've been airlocked. <laughs> Super Stuart just failed so abysmally, I had to throw him no, out the airlock for dis airlocked. for disciplinary reasons. <laughs> <laughs> the, the show at the moment Hi, on TV. Stuart, it was nice knowing you. Is that the, you floating? Yeah. Hi. The, the show on TV at the moment that takes the crown for the most simultaneous series on screen at the same time is Arrow. Arrow. Yeah. Flash, oh, no, 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 I know. I was getting Legends to that. Of, Legends of Tomorrow, Vixen, and, Supergirl. Super, yeah, five CW, just... series effectively taking place in the same universe. The, the Supergirl Star might not be in the same universe. They uh, haven't decided yet. Yeah, they're tossing it up. I'm classing it as it is I because it's a brilliant opportunity. Mm -hmm. like, I'd love to see a race between Supergirl and The Flash. That'd be hilarious. Oh, Barry would win. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't even be close, but it'd be hilarious. Barry can be Clark. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'd actually like to see that. But the question is, can we... like, Stuart and... um. Dave, I know you saw the first episode, or at least some of the first episode, of Aesthetic of a Rogue Hero, yeah. before Elroy and Doc went prude mode on us. Yeah. <laughs> now, picture Barry with Barry with his normal speed skills, with that outlook. Oh, God. <laughs> Just... Yikes. Okay. <laughs> and Scarecrow's out the airlock. He deserved it. Um, <laughs> I've been on a bit of an airlock dry spell recently, so... Jealous? So, yeah. Come on. What about um, Superman against Supergirl? Yeah, Superman, easy win. 
Oh yeah, Clockman's yeah. Hand, Clockman's hands down. I'm sorry, Clock, Clock just Clock's got more powers than what Kara does. Yeah, that's because she was honestly. Yeah, was fun I, for I a while. Just no, it's not just Clark, that. Clock, Clock can make is... a mini nuke. Okay. Yeah. It's. Uh, yeah. And... Well, I mean, from everything I've I've understood. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a huge uh, uh, Supergirl nerd, but from everything I understood, is they pretty much have the same powers. Um, I would just give it to Clark because he has greater experience, greater knowledge, whereas uh, Kara is just going to like jump in and and you know like a teenager jump in and do and and go guns blazing, whereas Clark would would have the um, temperament and know how to analyze the situation and it's, and fight accordingly. It's not Plus, just he that. Has going up against other Kryptonians. It's not just that, um, EJ. That you've got to take into account. It's more the also to take into account is the fact that Clark has been on Earth and grew up from from a baby to current. Kara was already a teenager by the time she got or yeah before she late. was exposed. Yeah, so she ha her body hasn't had the time to adapt and develop all the same powers. Yeah, I and it I'll... probably won't. And maybe she's also um, had. Learnt the rules of do's and don'ts, and Clark hasn't. Yeah. Yeah, she's still got some training from when she was on Krypton with her parents. Yeah, so she's. So. Sorry, it's a, a matter of it's. A, this was actually brought up in a Dragon Ball thing I read years ago. Um, it's not a case, like, for hundreds of thousands of years in Dragon, in Dragon Ball, Saiyans were told only the elite class can be powerful and go super saiyan so that's they've they've brought that brought up that way for years now you get goku he loses his memories suddenly he's able to break through all these barriers because go he just ten. doesn't know that it's possible that it's not supposed to be possible for him to do it yeah and he's got, you've the got clark in the and you've got clark who's in the same clark. situation he's got none of the training that says, look, we're not supposed to be able to do this, but we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do this. He's just able so he's to do it. Yeah. He doesn't it's have any like boundaries. How, he's up, no limits. It's kind of like how a lot of people break trying to break into Hollywood. They don't know what they're doing, and so they don't know they're not supposed to approach certain people. They don't know that certain things are generally very difficult, and so they just go do them without those mental um, uh, holdbacks. Yeah. yeah, and so, um, sometimes they get burned by it, but you know, on occasion, uh, they end up, um, you know, doing... making it really big when they otherwise wouldn't have. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, it's about time we switch gears to the news. Stuart, what have oh. we got this week? Oh, oh, yeah. oh. What oh. the hell was that? Not me. I didn't do it. I have no idea. What the hell? <laughs> Unless that was my I was... back. I, I think I think Stuart's news abilities just broke the space time continuum. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a? Oh god, he forgot to take the brakes off again. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, we'll start <laughs> with Arrow news and a couple of castings. Yep. Uh, Jerry Ryan will will guest star in season four. Oh yes, that's gonna be good. That we'll see. I've got a friend who is just obsessed with her, like in a terrifying, creepy, scary kind of way. way. Yeah, that the bad kind of obsessed. And he said he's actually gonna to have to get Arrow now. Go out and buy all of Arrow and watch it just so he knows what the hell's going on when she joins the show. <laughs> so yeah, she's going to play a friend of the Queen family. Yeah. If, uh, it sort of sounds like she's almost taking the role of the mother. Pretty much, yeah. So, Do we know if we're going to bring Dougie back for Arrow? Which one was Dougie again? D uh, I'm sorry, Dougie? Doug Jones? The uh, security oh, guard jo that he kept losing. <laughs> the, the guy with the like laser beam eyes. Okay, wrong one. I'm uh, not sure. <laughs> I haven't heard anything, so... He kind of got fried in Arrow. And kill, yeah. but I wonder if <laughs> no, not Diggle. Diggle will be in season four. Yeah, that already is confirmed. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, also, continuing with Arrow castings, uh, Team Wolf star JR Bourne will be has been casted as Double Down. Nice. So he's he's basically a card maniac freak, although he's more um he's more of a Flash villain. So I'm guessing there'll be a crossover with. Yeah. Well, the, the, season four and season two of Flash is going to be crossovers of everything, basically. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the good thing about having one of those consistent universes. You can get away with stuff like that. Yep. Mm. Which is why Vixen's going to be hard, because Vixen's an animated series. It's going to be off yeah. to the side. In the same universe, but not. Sort of like Daredevil is in the same universe, but yeah. off to the side. And then when we get to some news, I'm not sure is how I'm going to take this. <laughs> if this happens, by the way. Yep. Uh, uh, X Men Apocalypse director Brian Singer has teased that a crossover film with X Men and Fantastic Four could happen. Uh... <laughs> uh, please okay. no. Just for those who are listening, we will be covering Fantastic Four when it comes out. For the and record, we will most, and no one's going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, and for the record, I nope. unfortunately had. The Why is everybody of... hating on the new Fantastic Four film? They haven't seen it. How do you know it's going to be bad? It's a Fantastic Four film. <laughs> so yeah, we've I actually had the misfortune of watching Pixels last night. Oh, you actually saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I said, see, this is how much I this is how much I love you guys. I love you guys so much that I will torture myself with what is my new number one, number two, and number three worst sci fi of all time. It is <laughs> so bad that it tops Wing Commander on my list by such a cataclysmic level that it's the top three worst sci-fis of all time for me. Okay, I actually liked Wing Commander, so I, I can't really comment there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just... Wing Commander broke me. I just couldn't couldn't take it. Just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. Just... I'm not going to say it's a good film, but I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, um, moving on... Uh... Moving right along. Yep. Uh, Jurassic World has get... <laughs> sequel gets released date for 2018. No... No, <laughs> no, I know. I know. One was enough. Uh, it, like I, I, I like. I really did really love Jurassic World. But you didn't need. To, you don't need to do it anymore. Yeah. All I'm gonna say is, for the love of God, please do not make it Jurassic World: The Lost Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> My guess is um, it, it's gonna try to do something because the the scientist survived who yeah. was doing it all. So well, I yeah, guess yeah. Cheap enough to do it in the yeah. first place. For the love oh, yeah, of God, yeah, yeah. do not do an Aliens 2, sorry, a Starship Troopers 2, where it's a oh. group of soldiers being chased down by dinosaurs. <laughs> Please, just, well, so just we, That no. could be kind of, could could be kind of fun. fun. A group of soldiers being chased by a pack of Velociraptors. Yeah, no, a, a pack of Indominixes, but still, uh, no, no. Just, no, no, no. Yeah. If we're going to do it, just go with the traditional, go with the Raptors. Yeah, yeah, moving along, uh, QuakeCon happened over the weekend. Oh, no. Nice. Oh, God. I had to at least mention it. Yeah. Anything so, interesting? Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, uh, Doom multiplayer will be coming out. Um, be uh, multiplayer beta will be coming out soon, so... A lot of, if you've got, uh, if you pre-ordered, uh, sorry, not pre-ordered, if you bought, uh, Wolfenstein, the new order, you will get into that. Nice. And I actually want to give a shout out to yep. something that is actually running for this week. Yeah. It is called SGDQ Summer Games Done Quick. It is a speed running marathon happening on Twitch. I have a couple of friends doing it. It is an awesome, awesome week of speed running games. You get a, lot, a whole different side of things of glitches and everything. And go check them out on Twitch. Really, really awesome. Sounds good. And time for a really quick shout out to Simon Says Hobbies and Games. Located near Grand Plaza in Browns Plains, Brisbane. If you want board games or Gundam, we've they've got it all. So go and check it out. It's really cool. Anyway, in the last and minute, now we know who the sponsors are. Yeah, <laughs> on the on the way out the door, um, we've got 40 seconds left. I just want to say, make sure you check out SaveSciFi.com. We are uploading all the old podcasts there now. And keep it on facebookcom sci-fi. You will find all of our news and stuff shared there. EJ, shout out time. Go really quick. 
uh, nobilitytheseries.com. Go check it out and go check us out on uh, uh, facebook.com slash nobilitytheseries and at nobilitytheseries on Twitter. Uh, Firefly meets the office, guys. Uh, we're going to be premiering at Kamikaze uh, this October, so come check it out. All right. Anyway, guys, have fun. Catch Bye you later. All. Bye, Bye, Bye. Bye.